We can now speak to Ali Jumblad. He's a member of parliament. He is the head of the Lebanese Progressive Socialist Party. And he is joining us from Beirut. Mr. Jumblad, thanks for your time. Who do you suspect of being behind this attack? I bluntly accuse uh, the regime of Syria, Bashar al-Assad and his acolytes, because uh, Bashar al-Hassan, having discovered the plot of Michel Samaha three, four weeks ago, or a month ago, now uh, Bashar is taking revenge. I mean, he's taking revenge of Le the Lebanese, one of the main, main, uh, main architects uh, of the pillar of the inter internal security services in Lebanon, and at the same time he's taking his revenge, like, like what he's doing against his own people. You say the Syrian government, but how high up the echelons of the Syrian regime would you go? Sorry? How high up the echelons of the Syrian regime would you go? You do there accuse the Syrian government. Do you go as, as, there, as there high up as the Bashar al-Assad himself, only, the president? There is only one guy to be accused from the, from the killing of Rafir Hariri up to now. It's Bashar al-Assad. Okay, nobody else rules Syria. What would he stand to gain, though, from this killing today? Well, Bushram was a close friend and, uh, and used to give us always advices as for our own security. Now it seems we are uh, in a way powerless, but will, our answer will be just politics. We will answer politically, politically, refuse to accuse anybody inside Lebanon because we know the fragility of the situation in Lebanon. We accuse the Syrian regime and the fight will go on. But some would argue that political the Syrian fight, The political so, fight will go on. Some would argue, though, that the Syrian government, certainly its leadership, has its hands full with the crisis going on within its own borders. Why would it then think of conducting, carrying out such an attack in broad daylight in Lebanon? I haven't got the question. I'm sorry. The question was too long. Can you repeat I, I say please? some would then argue that uh, you know, the, the Syrian authorities may have enough on their hands to carry out such an attack, as you suggest. I think the Syrian regime is still unfortunately strong because of the cowardice of the, of the, of the friends of Syria. It's more than 19 months that the Syrian regime is killing his own people and the, all the so-called Syrian friends of the West, of the so-called West are just cowards, are not doing anything to accelerate his downfall. So, I mean, he has enough strength. Uh, the, the regime to kill us also, to try to kill, uh, to kill the brave people like we saw in Hassan in Lebanon. There are those, as you are aware, who are suggesting that Hezbollah, Syria's close ally, might have played an active role in this. Where do you stand on this? I refute, I refute this accusation. I just refute this accusation because those who are saying that, like that are stupid because they will enhance sectarian conflict. The, we have to target the enemy number one, which is the Syrian regime. But if the Syrian regime did carry this out, how might it have done so? Sorry? If the Syrian government, as you were saying earlier, might have been behind this, who might it have used? Who might have facilitated this? I'm not, I'm not expert in intelligence. I'm sorry. The one who was expert was Wissam al-Hassan. He's dead now. I'm not expert. I'm not, in, I'm not an officer in intelligence. Okay. How, how, much faith, how, how much I'm faith do you have in the now. Lebanese authorities and the government of getting to the bottom of this, of finding the perpetrators and bringing them to justice? Wissam was the best guy, was the best guy informed. I hope, but I think, I think he should have left also good people with him. We will follow, we will, uh, we will continue the fight, political fight, and we will discover and we will take our political revenge. Political revenge, I said. Member of Parliament, Walid Jumblad, thank you very much for joining us.